Happy Monday, everybody! You're listening to the Personal Playlist Podcast, fondly referred to as the P3. I'm Noah Daniel. Music is a world within itself, with a language we all understand. With an equal opportunity for all to sing. I am so excited to have Che Cheney here on the Personal Playlist Podcast. Che is a middle school teacher with 20 years of teaching experience, originally from Ottawa, Ontario, currently teaching English and physical education in the North Toronto area, and does lots of coaching and leadership work with students in the school. Along with his former teaching partner, Pav Wander, Che co-hosts a podcast called The Staff Room Podcast, as well as a live educational music radio show on Voice Ed Radio called The Drive. Welcome to the show, Che. No, I am excited to be here, and it's very unfamiliar to just be called Che Cheney because I have so many nicknames that it's it's rare to just hear my name. It's very peaceful. It's peaceful. Well, I think that that's good because this is a place of many things, and I don't think peaceful is something I've heard before, so why not shake it up from the start? Certainly not out of my mouth to self-describe myself or to describe how I'm feeling because most people tend to think I'm just the wild hurricane. Ah, yes, the hurricane. I keep thinking about the Neil Young song every time I see you get called the hurricane. But before (laughs) we talk about that part, let's talk a little bit about your shows. So you and Pav were co-teaching and then one day decided to start the Staff Room Podcast? That is, in essence, how it happened. But even more so than that, it was inspired by some of the, the lessons we were developing and teaching and going forth. And we decided to have our students create a podcast as a part of a way of them showing how to display their learning in a genius hour. And so we got this opportunity to learn and explore about podcasting. And we had so much fun watching our students have so much fun. We said, we're, we're learning from them. We're being inspired by them. If, if, you can see the absolute joy that they're having collecting and thinking their thoughts and planning it out. Maybe we could have the same level of enjoyment too. And so we took the lead from sort of our lesson, watched our students absolutely glow in this task and said, we're, we're going to try that too. There's a palpable energy that comes from the stuff you guys are producing. How did you go from looking at educational topics and sometimes having comedic banter, but really looking at a lot of a variety of aspects of education to deciding to add a musical edge and build another show? The the drive, I think it's one of those things where not that necessarily just working hard gets gets you noticed, but we were lucky enough that Stephen Hurley took a real interest in sort of the way we were making our podcast. And he came to us and said, could we put the Staff Room podcast on Voicehead Radio? And of course, Pav and I didn't know a lot about sort of the platforms and the infrastructures, but we said, absolutely, yes. And then Stephen just did some mentoring and some guiding and he was asking some questions, you know, what type of technology are you using? What type of mics are you using? Perhaps you could do this, perhaps you could do that. And the conversation became very organic. And then all of a sudden it said, well, you know, maybe maybe we could build from this. Maybe maybe we could do something. And of course, Stephen Hurley hosts The Doc on Saturday night. And so listening to that show a few times, we had some conversations said, could we make something sort of inspired by The Doc? A little bit more teacher talk, but the same idea of requesting music, music connected to educational themes and going through it. And so we debated and we thought, and of course, we were going to have to upgrade our equipment because the sound system we were using to make our podcast was a lot of manipulation of our physical space to try to get a better sound. But of course, to go live with Voice Ed Radio needs a little bit more gear and a little bit more tech savviness. And so as we were brainstorming or wondering how could we do this, Stephen Hurley sold us with this remark. And and I don't mean to disparage podcasts because our whole bread and butter is our podcast. But he said, hey, Che and Pav, come on. Anyone can have a podcast, but do you have a radio show? <laughs> and I said, yeah. That's I- the perfect line for Stephen Hurley. Like <laughs> his dream from when he was young was to start start radio. And he loves the live energy of it. And that's why going into our fourth season of On Ed Mentors is so exciting. So I can absolutely picture him saying that. And then what did you do? We said, okay, we're in. 
but we need this, this, and this. And the power and the passion of Stephen Hurley is he drove down to our school, worked around our schedule, came in at lunchtime, came in after school to show us some of the tech, to lend us some old mics. And then that inspired us to buy a few more pieces. And then we just went with it. And of course, on our first day, he called it, it'll be a soft opening. Like it, it, We won't really put it live. And then halfway through the show, he called and said, oh, by the way, we are live and I'm calling in as your first guest. And it's been... <laughs> A great adventure since. And the drive might not be quite as serious as the Staff Room Podcast, although the Staff Room Podcast isn't necessarily the most serious podcast, but I might argue it's very raw and it's very real. But teachers, and Noah, you know this so well, teachers and anyone really connect with music. It's a way of them telling their story. It's a way of them learning other people's story. And so some of our most powerful episodes are actually some of our drive, the live broadcasts. When we did our our first one, when we really dove really deep into the anti-racist framework, the amount of requests and the amount of people really tuned in that morning and, and had their songs. And it meant so much to hear what's going on. And we got a phone call from Texas right after we were done the broadcast to just say, this was the, the, the stress relief I needed. This just made me feel so good to be able to pick my song that just represented how I was feeling right now with all that was going on in America and to hear the songs that other people picked to express how they were feeling. So it might just be the drive with a little bit of edu talk and a lot of music but people really connect with the music they pick and the music other people pick so the drive has just been really fantastic uh evolution of us from the podcast and a perfect transition is yes music is powerful and i can hear your love for music in the work that you're doing so when i asked you to think about music and pick songs that are nostalgic identity and pick me up what was your process and what were you thinking I immediately thought family was the first thought. And that's why the first song is actually a really easy pick for me um, was the, the idea of Get Back in Time by Huey Lewis that has, of course, no necessarily real narrative that I, I adhere to with every word. But when I connect to my youth, I connect to my grandparents and I connect to my grandfather specifically because he was 35 years in the military fought in World War II, fought in the Korean War, but never spoke of the war, never would never tell those stories, would tell he was an elaborate storyteller, but he would never tell those stories. He would tell stories of hanging out in the mess every Friday and listening to big band music. But the the what why it was so important is that he always when when I became a teacher, he said that's such a humble profession, that's such a noble profession. And I and I thought to myself you fought in two wars, 35 years in the military, and I become, you know what, I would say in comparison, I'm just a teacher, and you are so in awe of what I'm doing. And so that memory always sticks to me, and it brings me back to my youth, because when we would hang out at our grandparents, what we would do every every second weekend, we would sleep over there. And with the sleepover, was we would play, me and my brother would play their only movie they had, which was a VHS cassette of Back to the Future. <laughs> And the last song on the on the movie credits is Back in Time by Huey Lewis. And we would always watch to the end of the credits because we love that music. So when you said something nostalgia, I said, yeah, that's the song I'm going with because it connects me to family. It reminds me just how much my grandfather thought the work I was doing was so important when truly I would argue his work was the truly important work. All right. Well, let's play it. Huey Lewis and the News Back in Time.
you thinking about or conjuring the memory of Back to the Future, I loved, loved that movie so much. And when I showed it to my daughters, I was hoping that it would translate because unlike music, which is almost a perfect portal back in time, movies don't always stand the test of time in the same way. So when you were hearing that song, were you thinking about sleepovers at your grandparents' house? I was thinking of the pictures of my grandfather that's in my room and my grandmother. And then I actually started to think of the tattoos on my arm because it's all their pictures. And it's a series of uh, newspaper articles related to World War II, which my arm tattoos are all an homage to uh, to them. And then I actually thought of The Drive because The Drive kickoff song is a Huey Lewis song. And I wanted to make the Huey Lewis connection, although it's not the same song. The the connection to your next song had me really, really wondering because you and I are just starting to get to know each other and we've had some really good conversations. But when I saw this as your identity song, it left me with lots of more questions, to be honest. So this this next song came to you as the song that reflects your identity because of what? I often describe myself as a high functioning introvert that to my core, I'm not a great um communicator. I don't talk particularly well. I'm not very comfortable in group settings. In fact, the anxiety of being around groups and and groups of people is really tough for me. And so I often don't participate actively or sort of like in the middle of social bubbles. I sit around a lot. I observe a lot. I do a lot of reading. I do a lot of reflecting. I talk to myself in my head all the time as like the best conversation I can get because I can't duplicate it when I'm around people. But it's always there and it's always festering. And so I, the song choice is, you know, Awake the Giant is the idea that although I might be quiet, although I might be on the side, perhaps you might as- make that assumption that it's not interested or not paying attention. Um, really, I am not in a negative way, but I'm stewing. I'm engaged. Don't gauge my <laughs> level of engagement by, you know, my surface level antics. Like if we're talking about a staff meeting, I love to sit in the back. I love to stand. I love to spread out my sheets. I love to have a red Crayola marker and I love to scribble all over the place. That's not me being disinterested. That's actually me being highly, highly engaged and a thought comes down. It's like a big, I spread out all my sheets like a canvas. Like I take up the space of seven people and I just want to be able to move and wander around and jot notes. And then it's like when the time is right, when I need to step in, I will come in like a giant, like don't awake the giant, whether it be an ally or an advocate for my students or to create learning opportunities. I won't stand down at those moments, but I often am seen as sort of an outlier, very quiet, very reserved. But then in certain moments, I take this grandstand. I I do consider myself a bit of a performer. Like I get over the anxiety with, I'm going to perform right now. I'm going to go up on stage. But part of being on stage is making sure you're very observant. You're well-read. You pay attention to the things around you. So you're not just being sensational. You're not just being over the top because sometimes the hurricane can seem a little over the top. But I always know that the sort of hidden beneath the giant is good observations. I pay attention to my surroundings. I reflect. I do lots of readings. I listen to lots of podcasts. I listen to lots of live radio shows because I always want to get better. So when I am awakened, be ready. Don't awake the giant. Listening to you say that makes me miss the classroom so much. It took me years to realize that students that didn't face forward and look engaged had so much more going on. And until I started using, you know, visual note taking skills or or using a different understanding of what engagement looked like and how I would know it happened, I would miss people like you. I would see it as misbehavior or disengagement. And, and I'm so happy when when I would see beyond what they were showing and I was able to awaken them to engage in the way that worked best for them. And I'm, I really miss the classroom. So I'm glad that you mentioned that, but also that you brought this person <laughs> into the show because I haven't heard Gowan mentioned one time since the P3 started. And as an 80s girl, having like a singer from Scarborough and <laughs> rocking a definitive new wave 80s mullet like having this come <laughs> onto the show is particularly fun so let's play your identity song awake the giant by gowan like madonna and Cher, he only needs one name
it's really amazing when you get to celebrate all of who you are in in experiences and you know it must be nice what people understand you now at work that they don't misjudge how you're quote unquote behaving when you're just being you I don't know if they've gotten to that point yet, but yes, they're very, uh, as Pav will tell you when you talk to her, is that there's always a few people like, yeah, that's just who he is. You know, I do. I remember six or seven years ago being told, oh, you got to sit with the staff during a staff meeting. It's, it's like, it's, I'm not not engaged in the meeting, but I don't want to sit around a table with six people and have to write my little notes on line paper. Just let me be out there. So yeah. And, and the overall scheme of things, yeah, people have just sort of got used to it and just sort of said, oh, we'll wait for Che. We'll wait for Che. Che at some point will, you know, will be awakened and make some comment and not that that's the definitive comment of the conversation, but um, certainly people realize that my quietness or uh, stoicness in the back is not a reflection of not paying attention, not engaging. Well, you're clearly a layered person and it's wonderful, but sometimes even in the best of times, especially now when a lot of people don't know what's going on or what they're teaching, even um, you need a pick me up song and you probably have lots of them because you're running or you're working out or using various, you know, maker experiences to create an entire gym in your backyard during COVID, whatever <laughs> you're doing, um, you need some music that's going to help you have that, that motivation that you need. So where did this song come from for you? You know what? When I think about working out, I actually have a very odd playlist. If uh, I'm doing sort of working on a bike or a running machine, I love orchestra music. I love music soundtracks. And then I often also when I'm doing my working out, I love big band music. I often joke, there's no chance there's anyone listening to big band music while they're doing their sets. Um, But the song I picked was actually, it's connected to sort of my sort of, takeaway on teaching or life in general is that often we can sort of place value on ourselves or our confidence is built in comparison to other people. And sometimes we see an author or a, a doctorate or, and, and those are all great things to have, but you know, I always consider myself all that what I have going for me is just 20 years experience. I don't have a lot of necessary, the other formal trainings. I have a few other additional qualifications, etc. but in that educational field, sometimes I'll think, well, I don't have this I don't have this. I don't have that. Can I really offer value to the conversation? Uh, and the artist I picked is probably the key because I love Motown music, but everyone knows who Marvin Gaye is because he's a star and he can sing. And everyone knows who the Temptations are. My, maybe everyone doesn't know which, each individual Temptation or who sings <laughs> which song because that's how kind of the Temptation fan I am. But this artist, Johnny Bristol, is just as equally a musical magician absolutely great voice great uh, design of his songs but most people won't have heard of him but he's still a master of his craft and so this song motivates me because it reminds me there are masters of their craft that are really visible that we can all see and we can all model ourselves on and we can all be inspired to but there are also true masters of their craft like the teacher just down the hallway that's got an amazing bulletin board that shows you that you need to go ask them a question of what they're working on what they're doing there are so many johnny bristols out there that are true masters of their craft but maybe we don't see them maybe we don't recognize them and then you realize that maybe that's you too maybe i'm the johnny bristol so i picked johnny bristol because i will know that none of you have heard of johnny bristol but he's huge on the motown scene great voice great musician constructs great music and it's just wonderful to listen to and i'm motivated because he's not a star but he is a star awesome well let's play it Show like grooving with ya, Johnny Bristol.
How are you feeling sharing your three songs with me on the show? Uh, I love those songs. I, 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 as soon as we're done, I'm going to go put them on my playlist and listen to them all back together, back and back. <laughs> uh, um, th- that Johnny Bristol, like every, all those songs are great songs and good albums, but that Johnny Bristol song and that Johnny Bristol album is like gold from beginning to end. And I always love introducing people to Johnny Bristol because inherently I always know that no one knows who they are, but they're going to just love the sound. Well, it's funny because when I saw the song, I'm like, is this your tribute to Pav? Because I can feel you guys grooving and how you communicate with each other and how you lead your podcast, both of them. And the work that you have in the edge of space, it's just, it's so synchronous, to be honest with you. But you also kind of play off each other in a yin-yang way. Um, and I'm kind of excited that this is the very first back-to-back twofer I've ever done with a pair on the P3. So you guys are like shattering records everywhere. You get to hurricane and then you get the gentle summer rain. <laughs> okay. So the P3 was a personal conversation. How are you feeling about sharing all these stories here on the show? I have become better and better at, at opening up and sort of uh, letting people see how I tick and how I think, which isn't necessarily the right way. It's just a way. It's just a way to appreciate. And I always am starting to appreciate being able to tell my story. And the podcast for us was a way to share our story. But this is a really personal way to get to share your story when you when you get to answer questions and connect with music. So I really love this experience. I love being able to just a little bit of insight into what makes me tick. And to be able to connect it to some music is just, it's a really great platform, a really great way to share your story. I can't believe it's been done in 45 minutes. I would have thought it would have taken 10 years to go through all this material. <laughs> well, it's it's a high yielding experience, especially on the radio, but even more so in the classroom with, with students. But while people are listening and getting to know you better, where can they find you? You know, this is when I love working as a dynamic duo because Pav knows this stuff right off the top of her head. Jim guy here, he's got to look it up. Um, so you can find the Staff Room Podcast on Twitter at, at Staff Podcast. And then you can also find us on Twitter because we love to run multiple handles. You can find The Drive on Twitter at, at The Drive Voice Ed. And if you can get to either one of those two spots, there's no way you won't be able to find us on all our other spots. So if you join us on the staff room on Twitter, you will be able to find all our other spots from there, assuredly, because we are very active in that Twitter space. Okay, wonderful. Is there anything you want to add before I play you out? Um, I want to just say thank you. And then I'll just say... Um, to Pav that I'm catching up now because of course Pav's the hot commodity like every time I turn around Pav's being interviewed for another podcast Pav's got an <laughs> invite here Pav's got an invite there like I like I feel like wham but I'm not George Michael I'm the other guy um so um no thank you so much for the invite it's been really fun it's really fun to actually just talk solo for a little bit and I do love the dynamic that Pav and I always have when we conversate but it's been fun to just have a, a one-on-one and Pav I'm catching up to you Okay. Well, I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you, Noah. It's been great. Loved it. Cheers. Thank you for joining us on the P3, the personal playlist podcast. I'm Noah Daniel. This is Voice Ed Radio, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.